So I'd like to talk to you all today about travel sketchbooks. Um, I'm going to show you some examples of my sketchbooks, um, the variety of things that can go into it, um, the way that a sketchbook is holding experience, recording experience. Um, particularly, I feel that the for me, um, when I go away from home, it ignites something. It like brings some kind of, I wanna start drawing, um, I wanna start taking things in. So it doesn't require going to far away places. You can do a travel sketchbook of your backyard. Um, but I think the, the crucial thing is that um, you are letting the world be the catalyst. You're letting something out there um, get you going, that you want to understand it, that you want to get it down in some way, and you want to write about it. So um, it's about letting things move you and bringing that into a form that certainly a camera can do this, but as we know, there's a, also a particular kind of vulnerability with drawing. Um, and I trust that. And I found that going into um, other environments, natural, human, within my culture, into another culture, that there's um, that vulnerability that happens when you open the sketchbook where you actually don't know. Even when you just walk out, you just don't know what's gonna happen. It sort of is a counterbalance to any kind of arrogance. And that approach invites connection. Connection happens in that um, way of entering the world. So what I've found is that um, by taking my sketchbook into um, on my travels, um, I have not only connected with myself, but I connected with others, that people are interested in what you're doing. Um, they want to know what it is. Um, it, of course, um, can be difficult if you really want to just be alone because <laughs> there's interaction. They, people come around. It's like you're a magnet in some way. So it's a good way of working with boundary. You can always close your sketchbook and walk away, but to be able to engage with people and ask them questions about this sculpture that you're drawing, um, because they may know something, they probably do know something. So there's a kind of dialogue that develops. And so when you travel, yeah, you wanna let the world in and the sketchbook is a vehicle for that. And basically you are a magician. It's not about being a great artist and being able to do something really accurate. Um, you're bringing something from nothing and it's magic. <laughs> and so you just trust that and um, uh, trust this as a way to see and a way to record one's experience. So I'm gonna share my screen and um, show you some different ways of working. Um, so this is, um, Just trying to get rid of the hide floating. Okay, good. Um, so I like to leave the first page of my sketchbook blank um, on a particular trip and come back and to create a title page that has a little view in it. Talk about constraint, like what's the image of this trip that if I was gonna distill it all down, 
So in Yellowstone, it also gave them, it gives a chance to record when I was there and Old Faithful. That was the, that was the iconic image. That was my title page. I went up on a, a, a boat, a small research vessel, vessel into Alaska on a natural history tour with a group of people. Um, and um, this was the view out my porthole from where I slept uh, that had um, pieces of ice floating through the water. So that was my, my um, distilled view. You're also gonna see a number of pages from um, the sketchbook um, that had brown paper and was very convenient because there was a lot of snow. And so it allowed me to work with gouache and to be able to show the ice and the snow and the floating little icebergs and everything. This was a title page from my trip, one of a number of trips I've taken to Guinea. Um, and it felt like the elements here were the openness of the people, direct, really letting me in, the totally unusual and beautiful hairstyles, and the fabric that they wrapped themselves in and that I collected while I was there. So those three elements, and then also that um, I was speaking French. That's the second language in Guinea. And so I could give those two um, versions of the, the country, which means woman. The word Guinea means woman. So that's Guinea. Morocco took a tile and just zeroed in there and worked with the colors of that place. The aqua, the ocean, the ochre, the, the gold, the teal. And Nepal, these eyes on the uh, stupa in Bodhanath in Kathmandu um, were always watching it was a four-sided situation. So that was very obvious of what needed to be there. So think about that. Think about what encapsulates this class for you and, and give yourself a first page. If you've already filled the first page, you could just put a page on top of it, and sort of tip it in and lift it up. So I've talked a lot about um, jumping the gutter. I'm gonna show some examples of that. This was up in uh, an island off of Maine and uh, the rocks were broad. So I'm working with pencil first and then just kind of drawing with the brush as well. Just following the edges, not being too careful about going right along the pencil lines, it's adding another element there. And then you can see that my writing also has a very stretched out quality, it's sort of like expanded, like um, elastic. Here's another page from that trip up to Alaska where we went into a museum. And um, this was such a huge mask that I couldn't possibly fit it on one page. And uh, so it was bold and um, powerful. And then the writing uh, could be on the diagonal, you know, sort of sometimes we counterpoint the writing with the um, quality of the drawing and sometimes we just emphasize it. So this had a very diagonal quality, <clears throat> Raven Mask. Talking about the potlatch how the, the richest person was the one who gave away the most, kind of a whole different sense of richness. <clears throat> Another page from that Alaska journal that I could just touch um, the snow on these mountains. And basically we were traveling all day long along this um, channel and I was just doing the mountains, 
across the top. And then I just started on more mountains. You know, like if you were gonna stretch it all out, I could have gone page to page to page, but I just decided to stack it up this way. And then just let the writing follow in the middle here. Mountains sliding past. Doing the same thing with clouds. Drifting by different qualities in the water. So writing, drawing, painting, all sitting together on the page in kind of layers. Just pen, no color, started around one edge of this little bay where we were staying and just worked my way around and around and around, kind of a contour, a little more accurate. You can see I got into some architectural stuff here, but just really was tracing the edge of this bay and then placing the writing within the empty space. I think I ended up with this quiet at the center of it all right here. So kind of in the process of drawing brought me to myself. Jumping the gutter with a milkweed plant, um, big strong pencil lines, writing counterbalancing on either side, just a little bit of red there up in the upper right. And you don't have to color in the whole thing. The eye will fill in the rest. This is the quality of a sketchbook. It, uh, it, it actually invites the viewer in because it's not quite finished. You can see the process that they're in. So note that you can just color in a few of the leaves. This was the engine room of the catalyst. The catalyst was the name of the boat that we were on up there in Alaska. And I called this the heart of the catalyst. It was really complicated. All these pistons and you know who knows what. Well-oiled machine. I couldn't possibly do it some kind of justice, but I decided that the way I could do it is I would only allow myself the amount of time it took for the machinist, Dave, to oil every part, which is what he did every day. So he did that in five minutes and that's the amount of time I gave myself to do this quick, quick drawing. And then I probably later on said, okay, I'm just gonna drop in some color. So, you know, sketchbooks are really direct on in the moment, fresh, and then you can extend it a little bit. I wasn't gonna drop in the color in any kind of precise way, but I just worked five minutes on getting the elements and then put in the color as best as I could remember it. And it just feels like there's a fullness here. Talk about no empty space. That's what it felt like. And that has a kind of an energy and vitality in itself. Some poppies on the table at a restaurant in Oaxaca that we were sitting having breakfast. And note here that the writing can sort of move with the drawing can be, have that same kind of counterbalancing grace to it. And clearly as I'm working through the writing, starting up at the corner, a morning of frustration, slow service at the restaurant, went hungry, <clears throat> heading down to the Mercado, who knows, I'm, rec I'm recording a day. And by the time I got to the end, it was like a family, a country, a world, a person. It was like I kind of allowed it all to be there and me being the one who was 
telling that story. Mapping. Here I was mapping my garden, um, trying to remember, you know, recording all the things that I had planted there at the different seasons. I think I was doing this as I was getting ready to leave this house. So it felt like a poignant kind of recording of a space that I had created. Mapping of a day. This is 24 hours that I spent in New York City. I turned the sketchbook vertically and worked from the top down. Very iconic little images. The moon, some glasses of a friend I visited, a flower, waiting in line for something back and forth and getting, I think we ended up at the Shakespeare in the Park where there was this amazing slide on the stage that the actors entered. So just a day in New York City, a map of it. A map of a trip that we took in Guinea. Here's the country. We started out in Conakry, the capital, where we were staying and we moved over about six hours to this little town village of Kabola. And these were all the villages, barely, just the little, I don't even know what to call them. Some were towns, some were little hamlets. Anyway, I was recording them all in a little sketchbook that I had along with me. And then I made a map. So I'm understanding where I was. And these were all uh, the little marks along the way where we were stopped by the police. They had marks over the road just as they were checking us and we were able to move along. So it was also recording kind of a rhythm of stopping and starting and understanding this culture. Postcard views. This was diving into a very complicated um, topic, uh, a rug that I had. Actually, no, it was, I think it was some rugs that I was looking at in a book and I wanted to immerse myself in these patterns. And so I just cut out a square on a piece of paper and held it over the rugs on the pages and found these little views and then wrote about the process. I did note that by the end here, I said the product is sweet, yet the process wears me out. So bring all of yourself in here. Sometimes it doesn't lead to bliss, although Looks good, but God, I get tired doing this. Bring who you are into it. Another kind of postcard view in Mexico, such a wonderful use of arches. So that was my image of constraint there. Another way of recording that trip to Cabola <clears throat> had just a little tiny sketchbook did little drawings as I went along of little things I saw, a road, some woods being burned, ways that uh, a termite mound, um, birds nests hanging on palm fronds, uh, an amazingly beautiful, wonderful way that a hat was being worn. And then I came back and created this page. So as you're bouncing along somewhere, you can't be expected to try to draw necessarily. You could, if you'd like that shaky line, but I decided to come back and kind of create the page afterwards, but I caught it on the fly. Another postcard view of that time in Alaska, just views of the water and what I was, I think seven views from the back of the boat, what I was noting, little, um, Roman capitals kind of spaced out. So different ways of adding the words that kind of um, enhance the spaciousness of, in this case, the pen work with a little bit of um, color. 
this was a, sometimes it's interesting to collect things, uh, collect images. And this was in India. And I became very interested in the marks that men and sometimes women, often women as well, the men had more complex ones, had on their foreheads. And it led me to this study of these different spiritual sects and what they, how, how each of them marked themselves each day. It was like putting on, it was getting themselves ready for the day was where these different kinds of markings and there was a wide variety of them. And so I started asking different um, teachers like to help me understand this and then began to do a diagram here of the different elements of, um, in this case, the Hindu um, philosophy, what the central elements were here, and then the wide variety of the creativity of how that was expressed. So this led over a series of weeks and I was understanding more as I saw people on the street as to how they were uh, representing their beliefs through really their own body art. Here I was just, this was in Guinea, I was just writing down people's names as a way of getting some, my own bearings of who was related to who and who was whose daughter and who was sisters and brothers and cousins and that they had Susu names, they had French names and they had, um, um, and, 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 uh, and Islamic names. So it was complicated and this gave me a way to understand it. And then they saw their names written. I was working just with those brush pens. They loved it that there was their name, they were on the page. So I was both recording so that I could understand and I was honoring them in the beauty of these of many names that a number of them carried. Travel sketchbooks in museums, going into the metropolitan, drawing these powerful objects that had been, um, that were no longer in those power spots, but were honored, illuminated. In fact, I gave them some illumination in the way I just put the gold around the images, uh, the divination objects, uh, the bird sculpture on top of a magic whistle calling the spirits. So this is how one as I said, falls in love, honors, respects the things of the world. And um, it's a whole other thing than taking a picture. There's a real relationship that happens here. And I believe that objects like this are still speaking and perhaps appreciate someone standing there for a long time, really exchanging with them. You know, when you draw, you hang out there. It's the same in the, in the zoo. You're not just going through one after another. You're, the animal actually notices that you're staying there and they get interested. So it's, um, it's slowing us down. Here's some animals, um, buffaloes out in Southern Colorado. Uh, they weren't in the zoo. Uh, they were crossing the road and I only had the amount of time that it took for this group to cross the road. I dro again dropped in the color later, but I was just, I mean, they were moving slow, but still they were moving. And so they were moving, yeah, crossing the road slowly. Um, some of the big bulls stop in the middle of the pavement and the cars wait. Nobody rushes a bison. So that caught a moment. And see how just leaving a little light here is that sense of sunlight hitting a form. You always watch for that when you're putting color in. 
leave the place for light to occur and don't fill in everything. Here they are just walking away. Drawing in Morocco at a cafe, I only had the amount of time to sketch that this, these particular people were walking past me. So a lot of memory, catching something, putting in the color later, then adding my, um, these are combinations of tourists and locals walking back and forth. I only have a moment before they're gone. So that's that kind of freshness. Sometimes you're drawing something that's quite still. Sometimes you just have a moment and that gives a different kind of um, experience. Drawing a puppy, moving fast, dropping in some color, digging up something, looking over the valley for an instant, tail tightly curled, and then it relaxes down. A very sleepy possum showing up in broad daylight, the end of January, digging among the leaves, silver fur thick, teardrop shape to body. Pink nose, pink feet. And sometimes, as I said, you attract people when you open your sketchbook. This was um, a place in Guinea near where we were living where they were collecting uh, wood for fires. And uh, I went over there with a friend and um, had my sketchbook, had my watercolors. And a man was working on um, carving out um, a canoe out of one big log. And it was beautiful what he was doing. And I thought, well, this is a pretty, this is a pretty simple thing to draw. I asked him, it's always good, always important to ask if it's okay to draw. And he said, yes. And I, so I drew this long shape and people started coming around. You know, there were a lot of people around. It's like, what is she doing? And uh, as I said, um, there's a, you are a magician. You're bringing something from nothing. And I asked what the name of the wood was. We wrote that down. Um, and then my friend that was with me, she said, why don't you put some color in? I went, okay. Now he had painted this. So I just opened up my water, watercolor set. I had a little water bottle and I just started to lay down some color. And it was completely silent. There were 40 people gathered around us. And I finished it. I hadn't done any writing. And suddenly the police showed up. I had not asked permission to have a gathering. And they were not OK with this gathering. And I quickly apologized. I showed them what I'd done um, and handed them some money to thank them and to the the man who had made the boat and everything dispersed. Everyone just went back. But it was that moment of gathering that I'll never forget. And I have the record of it. And I have the story of it. Salafu Conte, I think that was the name of the boat. And the Bois de Banque, the name of the tree that it's from. Recording an experience. And then the last two images, I was um, on that boat in Alaska and I was drawing this beautiful, beautifully coiled rope on the deck. And I was in my very precise mode, which is a great thing. You can go back and forth in a sketchbook, very precise, very loose. Here I was very precise and just moving along, following the curves and suddenly I heard this splash off the side of the boat and someone called out and they said, come look. And I, I, I got up, ran over there and there were porpoises that had gotten attracted to the sound of the motor and were leaping, leaping with us on the side of the boat. And I just grabbed my brush and started catching these porpoises as they jumped. 
So it was like moving from one immediately into the other. And uh, the color and the, that little spray. And then, you know, they were all moving diagonally. And then I wrote down what had happened to counterbalance that this way. So willing to shift in a moment. So that I hope will give you um, a lot of ideas, um, just a, a big sense of um, how to explore this and go out in the world and get ignited and make connections and uh, meet people and meet the world. So thanks. Hope you enjoy.